muscular system is responsible for every external and internal movement that your body makes. Movement. You move your legs. You move your arms. You move your body. Meanwhile, inside your body, you move blood through your tissues, air through your lungs, food through your digestive tract. Every movement you make depends on the action of muscles. Some 400 muscles make up nearly half the weight of your body. All your muscles have been given descriptive Latin names. The extensor carpi radialis brevis is a muscle in your arm. Brevis means it's short. Radialis refers to the radius, the bone it's attached to. Carpi refers to the carpals, wrist bones at the other end. Extensor means that it extends or straightens the wrist. Above it, another muscle is attached to the same bones. It is longer than the brevis, so its name ends with longus. Many of your muscles are attached to bones in your skeleton. These muscles are called skeletal muscles. They make your skeleton move. Every movement you make requires the coordinated effort of at least two skeletal muscles. Near a joint, one muscle is anchored to a bone by a tendon. It is connected across the joint to another bone. That muscle can contract and pull the two bones closer together. Another muscle opposes the first one. It can contract and pull the bones farther apart. For example, the muscle called the biceps pulls up your lower arm, while the triceps pulls it down. It takes two muscles to open your mouth and four larger muscles to pull it closed when you bite down hard or chew. Opposed muscles don't always alternate their contractions. They often work together, contracting at the same time. This can steady a bone in preparation for a forceful move. Because opposing groups of muscles work together, they must all be strengthened proportionally in a bodybuilding program. How does a designer of exercise machines take this into account? We design each particular piece of equipment to work a specific body part, such as the leg curl. Uh, it works the hamstring muscles. Uh, another example would be a leg extension, which works, works the quadriceps. They're opposing muscle groups. You need to have some type of balance. As a designer, I need to know how muscles work and how they grow. Just why does pushing a bar make muscles grow? We don't really know why stimulating muscles in this way increases their size and strength. This increase, called hypertrophy, also increases blood and oxygen supply and the storage of materials necessary for muscle contraction. As a result, the muscle becomes more efficient. Exercise never increases the number of muscles, only their size. A good exercise program would consist of working out opposing muscle groups every other day. This would give the muscle fibers a chance to heal and grow. When muscles are strained, damage can be permanent. Therapy devices can stimulate healing, prevent further injury, monitor use of the muscles, and help a patient learn to use the damaged muscles properly. Every skeletal muscle is a bundle of long fibers, each with many nuclei. Because of its appearance, we call this striated muscle, because each fiber contains small threads whose thick and thin filaments give the muscle a striped or striated look. When protein molecules in the filament slide past each other, they shorten the bundle of muscle fibers and your body moves. The arrangement of striated muscle fibers affects the way they pull. When they grow parallel to the direction of pull, they pull farther when they contract. When they grow at angles to each other, they don't pull as far, but they pull more strongly. Sometimes the fibers fan out for a strong pull at a single point. Other times the fibers curve around a bone, which they twist or rotate. 
All skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles. When you want to raise an arm, for example, your brain first gives a signal, raise the arm. An electrochemical impulse travels along nerve cells, or neurons, toward a plate alongside a muscle fiber. The impulse causes calcium to enter the neuron. That allows a chemical transmitter to travel from neuron to muscle cell. This triggers a signal in the muscle fiber. Its filaments slide and the muscle contracts. Meanwhile, other neurons carry signals back to your brain. In contrast to skeletal muscles, a second kind of muscle is found in your heart, called cardiac muscle. It is striated like skeletal muscle, but cardiac muscle fibers branch in an irregular network. They are much harder to consciously control. That's because the signal to contract them doesn't come from the brain. It comes from a group of specialized heart cells called the pacemaker or sinoatrial node. Its signals spread through the network of muscle fibers, causing your heart to contract in waves as the signals pass through its tissues. A third kind of muscle is found in the walls of blood vessels and in your digestive system. It's called involuntary muscle or smooth muscle. Each cell is visible with one nucleus inside. The tissue looks smooth rather than striped. Smooth muscles contract slowly and rhythmically without your thinking about them. In your esophagus, there are two crisscross layers of smooth muscle, which help you swallow. These layers squeeze food down toward your stomach. Here, more smooth muscles churn the food. Then a ring-shaped muscle opens, called a sphincter, and the food continues into your intestines. Here it is squeezed farther along by more involuntary smooth muscles. Even the irises of your eyes are smooth muscles. They open your pupils wider when the light is dim. They close your pupils when light is bright. While smooth muscle and cardiac muscle both have great endurance, that is not always the case with voluntary muscle. You see, there are two major types of voluntary muscle fiber called fast twitch and slow twitch fibers. They affect an athlete's performance because they differ in the way they store and release energy. That energy comes from the chemical bonds that hold carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen together in a simple sugar called glucose. Glucose can be broken up by enzymes. Then it forms a compound called pyruvate. Another part of this reaction stores energy in the chemical bonds of a compound called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Here the energy remains until a nerve impulse signals a contraction. Now the ATP breaks up and gives off its stored energy, which powers muscle contraction. The details of this process are different in fast and slow twitch fibers, and the details affect a muscle's endurance. When you feel tired during strenuous exercise, it is generally your fast twitch muscle fibers which are responsible. As a staff exercise physiologist, let me see if I can explain that in a little greater detail. Most fast twitch muscle fibers depend on anaerobic reactions, anaerobic meaning without oxygen. The anaerobic energy system used to produce energy in the body, you have two substances, ATP, which is stored in the muscle cell, and creatine phosphate, which can be broken apart very rapidly to produce more ATP. Now, muscle cells store very little of both of these substances. When you pull against a heavy resistance, you depend on your fast twitch muscle fibers. They are big, strong fibers that contract to maximum force very rapidly, thus the name fast twitch muscle fibers. They can run out of stored ATP and creatine phosphate and consequently energy in less than 30 seconds. Slow twitch fibers, on the other hand, are not as strong as the fast twitch fibers. They're more of an, uh, an endurance type fiber. Also, they contract much more slowly than the fast twitch fibers, thus the name slow twitch muscle fiber. They're also called aerobic fibers, which means with oxygen, meaning that oxygen must be present in order for pyruvate to be broken down. Due to the smaller size of slow twitch muscle fibers, 
They are not as strong as fast twitch muscle fibers, but their aerobic reactions produce 19 times more ATP than anaerobic reactions. When the oxygen supply to the working muscle is sufficient and ATP is produced aerobically, there is no lactic acid buildup and plenty of ATP to supply the working muscle. So exercise can continue for an extended period of time. If you're looking for greater muscle endurance, I recommend a low intensity, longer duration type exercise. And I would recommend for size and strength gains to use a heavier weight with lower repetitions. This would increase the size of the fast twitch muscle fibers. People with better developed fast twitch fibers can excel at sports like the high jump or the long jump because jumping requires a rapid, strong muscle contraction. They can also excel in sprinting or any sport which requires a maximum burst of muscle power for a very short time. On the other hand, people with better developed slow twitch fibers can do well at sports like long distance running. Here the pace is slower, but a single race may last for quite a while and require great endurance. Your muscles respond to the demands that you put on your body, and many of them respond to your conscious control. When you move your limbs, or move blood through your bloodstream, or food through your digestive system, you depend on the actions of your muscular system.